Hey guys, I'm Pixel Dan, and this is a review of the Savage World Horror Figures from Funko. That is all right, my friends. So Funko's Savage World line is one that pays homage to the vintage 5.5 inch barbarian style action figure. I'm talking stuff like He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, any of those awesome toy lines from Remco, all of those cool stuff that is right up my alley. That is the stuff I loved and I grew up with. And of course, if you've been following me for any time at all, you know I'm a huge fan of that particular action figure aesthetic, especially E-Man. So getting stuff like this, I think personally, is a lot of fun. These guys are totally crazy because they are horror movie icons, but they are done in a weird retro buffed out barbarian style. As you can see, all of the figures even come packaged on very similar card backs, much like those vintage action figures did. The blister bubbles fully showcase all of our figures within, and across the top we've got names of the various movies they're from, although the licensing must have depicted some of these movie choices because some of them are a bit odd. But nonetheless, the characters inside don't necessarily match that specific movie. They are just these particular horror icons, but in this brand new style. So we're going to open these guys up and take a look at them one by one, and I want to start things off with the man from A Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. So as I mentioned, these should be right around the five and a half inch mark, which as you can see, boom, right there, five and a half inches tall, or 5.5 as we like to call it, the collectors of this particular style of action figure, and check this out. So you got a lot of things going on here that makes him reminiscent of Freddy Krueger, recognizable as the character. You can see he's got that sweater pattern, but instead it's like in this crazy ripped and torn sash going across his torso. And he's got this little hood over his head, uh, but instead of, you know, instead of a fedora hat, but the skin is still all burned and wrinkly and exactly as you would expect. He's got a loincloth on, he's got the furry top boots, so definitely has that crazy 80s barbarian style going on with him there. And the aesthetic is exactly that. He's in that squat pose, he's big and chunky, uh, way bigger than, you know, a buffed out character like this should be. Uh, it's perfect. He looks awesome aesthetically, uh, since they're trying to capture that retro barbarian style. I think that was done very well on this guy. And one of the things I want to say is the quality on these is fantastic. I mean, the weight of the figure is nice. They feel solid. They feel very durable. I mean, seriously, kids could grab onto these and bash them around and play with them just like those figures from the 80s if kids were wanting to pick up horror icons as 80s barbarians. It's weird, I know, but the toys are very well made, and that is what I'm trying to say. And the articulation is going to be the same on all these guys, with the heads just looking left and right, the arms moving up and down at the shoulders. Uh, you got ball joints at the thighs instead of the rubber bands like a lot of the old figures had, but you can see that the legs actually move around in much the same manner. For Freddy Krueger, of course, you've got to have his little slasher clawed glove, and the way they accomplish that is with this cool little clip-on accessory. Look at that, snaps right on the right hand of Freddy Krueger. It's oversized and got crazy giant claws on it, and it's fantastic. I love it. So next up, we've got Michael Myers from the Halloween series. Uh, he looks a little more like his standard self, uh, especially the head sculpt. Look how great that head sculpt is. The mask looks perfect on this guy. And you know, he's very iconic with that mask, so I'm glad they didn't change that up too much. But the rest of him here, while he's still wearing that, you know, faded kind of blue like jumpsuit, you can see that his buff arms like ripped out of the sleeves, so he's got like torn and tattered sleeves and the bottom of the shirt comes down and is torn and sort of in the style of a loincloth like the barbarian figures. Uh, it's really cool looking and he's got this very pale white skin but not quite as pale white as the mask that he's wearing there but I love him. I think he's a great design. In fact I think he might be one of my favorites. It just works so well for this character. So he actually comes with not one but two knives for carving up his victims. So check that out. We can arm him up uh, with two knives here. Now if I do have one complaint about this guy, it's that his hand sculpts are much too loose for these knives. Now you can get them in his hands and you can see they rest there because of the shape of the blade, but look how loose the handle is in his hands. That's unfortunate. And I also tried posing him like, you know, with a stabby pose there and that is even less uh, of a grip there. So it's just real loose. You can see it falls out very easy. So he can 
can hold them, just not as tight as I'd like him to. The sculpt is great, he looks fantastic, just wish he held onto those weapons a little bit better. Alright, coming straight out of the Hellraiser films, we've got Pinhead. This is another one that fits this aesthetic very well. I mean, especially with the crazy outfit he's already wearing, that really does kind of fit in with this weird barbarian style. I mean, he looks like a straight villain, right? Out of like an 80s barbarian toy line there. Uh, the Pinhead looks awesome. You got all these little flathead kind of pins sticking out there, but he looks really great. Uh, you know, got that buffed out body, but still has that nasty kind of flesh, like torn on his chest and hanging down it's painted with like this glossy red so it looks disgusting uh, but again like his tunic is kind of ripped and tattered down here at the bottom giving it the look of like a longer tattered uh, loincloth there and you can see he's even got like the tattered tops to his boots which is very cool he comes with two tool like tortured weapons there he's got like a little hook and he's got this little uh, sawed off like knife weapon there uh, he gets a better grip with that knife than he does the hook you can see that's a little loose uh, it's not quite as loose as the Michael Myers weapons, but I say that, and look, you can see the way it's fallen in his hands. So, yeah, it's actually a pretty loose accessory also. So, a bit of a bummer again on the accessories. The overall figure looks fantastic. I love the mix of, like, the glossy blacks with the flat blacks. Looks really good. And, of course, he's got that puzzle box accessory also, which has got a beautiful sculpt, nice shiny gold paint deco. Not something he can actually hold on to because of the way his hands are molded, but it's still cool that he comes with it nonetheless. Up next is Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Uh, again, another one that this barbarian style actually fits very well. He's so crazy looking. Look, he's shirtless wearing his little apron to catch the blood splatters, which, you know, didn't do too good. He still has blood splattered on his chest, but I love that. He's just all buffed out there. Has a very Conan look to him, actually, if you look at him from the back, because of, like, the leathery pants, the furry top boots, that loincloth, the chain going around his waist there. Uh, it's very cool. And, of course, just like with Michael Meyer, his face is kind of untouched as far as the style goes. You can see he got that uh, awesome leather face-like mask going on there. Uh, but this is what's really fun about him with his accessories. He's kind of got the trap jaw thing going on what I mean by that is he's got interchangeable hands so instead of giving him a full-on chainsaw he's got a chainsaw hand which is pretty awesome but you've got the ability to swap that off you can just pop it right off this little ball jointed peg there and if you want to in its place you can add this little mallet Urgh, just gotta pop it on the ball joint it's a little tight there we go just like that and you know now we can do a little bit of tenderizing there with that mallet but I thought that was really fun uh, for the design to kind of really make him stand out a little bit giving him the interchangeable hands for his weapons and lastly, that's going to bring us to Jason from Friday the 13th. Uh, much like, like Freddy Krueger, uh, his design is real whacked out, but I love it. So they went full barbarian with this guy also, because he's wearing kind of like that greenish jumpsuit, but it's all tattered and torn like a tunic there. He's got chains wrapped around his waist, leather straps all over the place. Like, look, like around his torso and his waist and his thigh and his bicep. He's just well, got these leather straps everywhere. He is wearing his famous hockey mask. What I I really like is how it's torn on one side and you can see his real real beat up face over here missing an ear and like his skeletal like jawline and of course you can see his ribs poking through his flesh on his torso also it's just really cool looking he comes with an axe for a weapon which has got a cool bone for the handle uh, he's got the same problem where it's a little loose in his hand but still a really fun accessory uh, this guy looks fantastic in the 5.5 style uh, I think out of all of them this right here is my personal favorite so there you go my friends there is a look at the brand new savage world horror action figures from the folks over at funko look i've been loving the savage world line and i know it's very niche there's a lot of people probably looking at this going what why why do these exist but that's exactly why I love them, because I love weird, creative stuff like this. I love fun nods to the 80s and old toy lines like that. So seriously, these are a lot of fun for what they are. They're not going to be for everybody, but if you enjoy something weird and off the wall, I really think you should check these out, because they are a lot of fun. I gotta give a very special thanks to the folks over at Funko because they sent these along for me to check out in this video. But these are available for order right now at places online and I believe stores like GameStop are carrying them and they're only around the $10 price point. So happy hunting, my friends. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, my friends.